Welcome to the Sliding Doors podcast. We are streaming live on Twitch and we will have this video available on YouTube for you in a couple of days. But you can also reach us on slidingdoorspodcast.com and all of your favorite audio podcast platforms if that's what you want to do. So I'm Sushil and on the other screen you see Rohan Tharin. And hello, hello. We are the two hosts. Oops, sorry about that, Rohan. <laughs> we are your two hosts for the Sliding Doors podcast. Um, yeah, so today we've thought we, we thought that we'll talk about um, a couple of things that influenced us media primarily, uh, that influenced us as kids, or at least um, what occupied our minds, the stuff that we used to read and watch and listen to as kids. Um, and there's an interesting thing that we, uh, we we touched upon in our conversation uh, a couple of days ago. And Rohan was saying that um, even though we grew up in India, um, reading and experiencing a lot of the Western media, um, it's very different from actually growing up in the West. So. Uh, we're kind of, what's the term you, you use, Rohan? There's something that... Uh, and in a westernized Indian, Indianized American... Right. I've forgotten which, what exactly I said. But I yeah, think, I get I your point. Westernized Indian is what you had yeah. uh, mentioned. Well, so and we... Yeah, they're very we're different cultures. Of, we're American as Indians. So it's, we're not a proper Americans. But within... Indian subculture, we have an Americanized element because the movies we watch, the books we, the comic books we read, the music we listen to is mainly American. Some of it British, but basically right. American. And so it's it would be inaccurate to call us Americans because we've I think merged this with Indian culture. So it's a mix of both. I, I wouldn't say American or British as such. Um, um, I, I wouldn't point out any one of those cultures, but it was a blend of those. Um, I believe that growing up at my age uh, in India, you couldn't avoid watching some of the uh, the uh, Russian and West German programs that programming that Doordarshan used to have on television. Um, so it was a mix of all of those cultures. So. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, a mix to influence there. Um, what should we talk about first? Do you want to talk about? I want the... to. This Russian and stuff interests me because so I for those of for people listening uh, and watching, I uh, grew up in Velo, which is which was a small town back then, and um, so we had only Doordarshan one, DD one. Whereas these Chennai boys, that is Sushil and Co, had uh, two Doordarshan channels. So I don't remember there being much of interest apart from DD News and maybe Shaktiman or I think some of the uh, Ramayana Mahabharata stories. Whereas Sushil, you talked about Russian and what else? You had quite West a... West German. West German. What was that about? Do you remember any of the shows? Yeah, I mean... There were quite a few shows. I, um, one of them that really stuck in my mind was uh, it was a detective show called Derek. And it was this uh, a story of this older uh, detective and his sidekick. Um, I don't remember uh, what his name was, but this was all stuff that was dubbed in English. And um, it, it was From the what? Uh, Russian, German. German. From German. So this was okay. German. And then there was another show. I, I have no clue what it was called. I don't remember what it was called. But it was a science show. And uh, it was very interesting because it was very different from any of the science or any of the educational shows that uh, UGC used to put out uh, in, in the middle of the day on TV. Um, okay. So it was a show that used to teach concepts of science and biology, I mean, physics, biology, and all of that stuff. Um, but in very easy, relatable terms, uh, they even used to do stuff like woodworking. Like, for example, I learned what a veneer is 
by these guys showing um, exactly how you go to a shop. You go to a shop and buy a veneer and then put it, apply it on a piece of wood. Only um, in the 80s, right? Can you imagine that being on mainstream TV right now? Like a show where they show you buying the stuff, putting it together. I, I, I do That's think it's... Based. I do think that uh, well, it wasn't really slow paced, man. It was really fun. It was oh, so they fun. had. It was well edited. Ve very well edited. So there were. Uh, it was interspersed with animation and cartoons and stuff like that. So it was fun, really fun. Um, I enjoyed it. I made learning okay. fun. Um, apart from that, so we're talking about the Russian stuff. There were some Russian cartoons. Uh, um, I believe. Uh, Brother Wolf, Br'er Wolf, and uh, uh, Fox, or something like that. I don't remember exactly okay. what those were. And then there was, uh, I don't remember what, what language Pingu was, but definitely that Pingu. was. Pingu! Yeah. You don't remember Pingu? <laughs> no, man. For some reason, I don't remember. I didn't you, have access to any you of were deprived. You were deprived hey, of television. I remember He Man, um, what do you call uh, My Little Pony, and there were glow worms. Those are the three things I remember. That was so even later have, on. They must have come on DD1. All this exotic stuff would have been DD2 and beyond. I don't think so. I, uh, I, I think this was national television because it could not have been regional television. Ah, right. So it would have been DD1. Maybe okay. the timings because uh, we used to watch some of this stuff in the mornings. Maybe you were not allowed to watch television in the mornings. <laughs> What were your TV rules? Because I've forgotten mine. But like you, they, you obviously wouldn't have been allowed to watch through the day, right? Well, um, on in the summer holidays, yes, as okay. much as as much as possible. Really? But evening, we had to. Evening, we were allowed. We, we were asked to go out. Who uh, decided what you'd be watching? <sighs> you or your sister? I, oh, that way. Um, well, there was only one or two channels, so there was no choice, right? Okay. We had to watch whatever was on. But I remember there was this show called The Emerald City. <clears throat> Have you ever seen okay. that? It was a cartoon. Uh, it was it, it follows um 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 I, I, I'm 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 getting the wrong name altogether. I'm getting Little Red Riding Hood when I what I, I what I want is Dorothy and uh, oh, Toto. Okay. Uh, their story going through the uh, the Emerald City it was kind of very different, but it was um, it was a fun show, very different from just the the, the traditional um, Wizard of Oz story. Mm. Um, but that used to be on in the mornings. I remember it started off in our holidays and went into uh, school days. So we used to watch for like 15, oh. 20 minutes before school and then go out to school. <laughs> so you'd miss the show. You'd, you'd get half the show. No, no, no. We, we were, it, was, it was before we had to leave for school. So, but but it, it finished okay. off uh, soon after school started. So maybe a week or two into our school days is what we uh, right. were allowed to watch. I guess the thing is we watched a lot more television than you. You were right. probably actually going out and playing more than watching so, television. Yeah, or we reading. got I our TV late. I would, I would say, um, yeah, good question, actually. No, I'll tell you why we had a different set of, yeah, now I remember. Uh, because we grew up on a campus with other doctors, some of the doctors would go abroad to mm -hmm. uh, study, and they'd come back with recorded tapes. And so... I would be watching stuff that they had recorded in uh, wherever they went, America, England, whatever. So right. I would watch and rewatch these videotapes as opposed to watch TV. Uh, right. So a lot of, like, for example, I used to be a huge Cosby show fan. Um, and we can get to the sadness of that whole thing. But a uh, huge Cosby so show fan. And I knew all the lines by heart, like, Mm. It's like friends almost. Cosby Show was my friends back then. Right. Um, word for word. And especially at that age, right? When you're when you're six or seven, you're like a sponge. Everything goes in. You remember those. Um, and I think here's a question. I wonder whether like all the jokes we tell or that we yeah. sort of make up maybe. 
mm-hmm. we're not like stand up comedians so we're not coming up with terribly original jokes i have a feeling a lot of the structure of the jokes i tell right now were based on the jokes i heard as a kid so like you have the cosby show you're listening to the punchline and the way it's set up and the kind of things that are said i now remember periods of my life where i would first share those jokes and then i'd start right. tweaking those jokes right i have a feeling a lot of my uh, the, the base for my comedy was was set up from these childhood shows um did you That's watch any comedies um comedies um i remember that we used to oh, sorry about that uh i remember we used to watch a lot of stuff um yeah i mean so while we talk while we on the topic of west uh, or german shows there was something that all of us in uh, i mean pretty much everybody in school used to watch and that was called the dd's comedy show mm. and uh, it's a it's a guy who's maybe the uh, the german version of uh, mr bean oh. maybe a little not not as dumb as mr bean but Um, slapstick comedy in in that vein yes yeah, slapstick various types of comedy and there were comedy skits essentially okay. um a lot of fun um that yes and i used to watch a lot of these uh, british comedies that my uh, granddad used to granddad and uncle used to watch so i grew up watching uh, hello, hello hello i knew and, it uh, i knew it yeah yeah um yes minister yes prime minister right and well i'm i'm watching it now and i'm just wondering how i found it funny at that time <laughs> because it's it's not <laughs> easy to grasp the jokes kid. and also the style of filmmaking right the angles camera angles how long they stick with any particular shot and of mm-hmm. course the script and the jokes yeah mm-hmm. it, it's so different in so many ways faulty towers Mm yes absolutely and, uh, um yeah so a, a lot of that um may i help you? uh what's that uh, are you being served are you being served yeah are you being served yeah so all of those and okay and um i think a lot of the other shows that i watched were there were some really nice indian shows also at the time so hmm. there was the world this week that we used to watch every uh weekend that was uh, produced by NDTV um Pranoy Roy and then there's uh Beyond 2000 which was I don't I'm not sure if that was a Indian show or a foreign show but that was also a nice futuristic sci-fi tech uh, not sci-fi science and technology show then there was uh Living on the Edge uh oh. which was uh produced by it was like a, a kids kind of thing um meant for kids produced by nirat alwa nitin alwa or something um uh, that was a fun show and um um yeah i mean uh, so all of those shows were a lot of fun cartoons yes i mean w- what did you watch as a kid which cartoons did you watch well, this ties into my one question i wanted to ask you which is which was the first show you remember being um like a fan of like a cult following like you were this fan like for me i think it would have been teenage mutant ninja turtles um or even before that there was a show i used to watch so uh, i one of the big differences is in 1992 uh my parents needed to go abroad to study and they took me with them so we went to england so before mm-hmm. and that was around the time india's uh borders were being op- opened up when it came to entertainment and right. uh, globalization basically in many forms right so when i left india we had only dd1 in velour when i came back suddenly there was star plus and some whole bunch of other satellite channels um which was actually good because In England the first thing i remember is on saturday mornings from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. was back to back cartoons and i remember going yeah. there and being just overawed but so i i said tmnt dude, uh, teenage mutant but that we was we used to have 
uh, cartoons before that in in, uh, in India also on Doordarshan. I don't remember them for some reason. So He what would happen is, like I said, um, so for example, uh, I remember that um, when we used to come back from church, and um, immediately on after church was street talk. Ah, so. It was what uh, that would have been eleven thirty p uh, a m, in, uh, and uh, on Sundays, um, so that was something we used to uh, look forward to. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, uh, but but we used to have like the uh, uh, we used to have like Donald Duck and stuff in the mornings. Remember? Yes, and uh, I don't remember whether on, it was TV on, on or weekends or video, but definitely yes, Tom and Jerry. That's another big wow! I'd forgotten about Tom and Jerry uh, as being a big part, but uh, I, I definitely remember watching more TV after having come back. So that's ninety five right. onwards. But just yeah, think definitely. about this. I think ninety. Um, 90... Yeah, I think you're right. About ninety two is when uh, we got satellite TV, um, and uh, yeah, that that brought in like a uh, stream of movies and. Cartoons and all of that. Yeah, and you got to remember when I say in England from six a.m. to one p.m., that's back to back. So you have Teenage Ninja Turtles, uh, Transformers, then Mrs. Pepper Pot, then Silver Hawks, then uh, we just keep going. Um, and I just remember being stunned by that mm -hmm. option. So Saturdays were like school days. You're just about waking up, dragging yourself out of bed. Saturday morning, up bright and early downstairs. I was up before my parents. I'd come down, put Absolutely. the TV on, it was, and it watch. was pretty much the same here. So that experience, <laughs> I think, was the same. Um, so if it was I, Teenage Mutant for me, who was so yours? The first show you remember? A lot of stuff um, that... I mean, there are quite a few similarities. So my uncle used to live in um, uh, Dubai, and he had sent us... He brought down a couple of cassettes of um, shows that were recorded. Um, TMNT was a big part of that, and um, I think I was I was a little. I mean, I, people used to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on uh, Cartoon Network when Cartoon Network started, but I had already seen most of those those episodes. Right. Um, so TMNT was a big deal, um, but we also w used to get some of the uh, comic books from the uh, library. So, comic books from the library was a big, uh, big source of uh, entertainment for me. And I think right from the age of what, maybe about six, six to six onwards, uh, I used to go and uh, bring back comic books. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic books, uh, not so much. But I had, I had a. I, I had a, um, let's say I had an advantage because my dad had gone abroad and he, I, I remember bringing, I, I remember having these TMNT uh, erasers and uh, pencil boxes and stuff. Oh, and wow. Was the, <laughs> oh, you must have been. Everybody in. I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask. That's solid yeah. property, man. Oh. Yeah. I had TMNT uh, pencils and stuff. That was fancy stuff back then so, <laughs> because you couldn't get merch right uh licensed yeah. merch here in india um so yeah i mean i was one of the things that really interested you know, me was that mo so most of these things predated me these cartoons like way before i was watching them they existed but x-men as a cartoon that you watched on tv was brand new. I remember, I still remember the ads. This was in England and they were like, the cartoon sensation that's taking, that's taken America by storm is now coming to England. And they like built up the hype and all of that. Um, and I then, never watched uh, a I cartoon? X-Men cartoon? cartoon? No. <gasps> oh. We used to watch G.I. Joe a lot. Okay, okay. And I remember um, I, I had some of the toys and I sent in like, uh, like, cutouts from the boxes and I got a, uh, a G.I. Oh. Joe bag which to my disappointment was too small for me so my sister used to use that okay <laughs> she didn't uh, mind using it oh, she would have also been a fan 
Um, yeah, I suppose. But this is when I realized that we haven't really changed because in those days there was GI Joes and I wanted the action figures and I begged my parents to get me some. I'd buy them and then like maybe three, four months in, I've got bored of them. The same thing happens even now, man. I'll buy something like a catapult. I told you, right, the other day I bought myself one of these fancy cap catapults from Amazon. One month in, I've lost interest in it. So the, I think the boy in us doesn't really uh, doesn't really leave that 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 the need for toys. I I I, I don't think I really. Um, but I didn't get that many uh, GI Joe toys. I I had quite a few. I had the Jeep. I had this the uh, bike. I had a one of those rocket thingies and a couple of uh, um, figures, action figures. I think I had Snake Eyes and a couple of others. Right. But um, yeah, there's still more than many other kids uh, that I knew. But um, yeah, so uh, didn't have too many of the other options. So uh, I used to play around with them for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Because I remember even when I had I don't think... Things... Yeah, sorry. Um, even when I had those things, I was outside making pots out of clay and... My biggest, th dude, I still remember the biggest thing for me was my dad was a huge Cowboys and uh, Native Americans. We used to call them Indians then. Cowboys and Indians fans. Uh, and he would um, teach me about how they'd make traps. So I would dig a hole, put sticks across it, put mm -hmm. leaves on top of the sticks, and then cover that with dirt. Okay? So that and then break people's legs? How big do you think the hole was? It was this big. <laughs> So your toe would go, <laughs> your toe right. would go into it, and I still right. remember the scene where there was this freshly swept uh, front yard, it's mud, but very carefully swept, and in the mm -hmm. middle you can see where this boy has like dug a hole and put some mud on top, and I'm like, "Appa, appa, can you guess where I put the trap?" <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, always a good sport, would act like he hadn't seen this mound in the middle okay. of this flat space. Um, when did you transition from cartoons to movies? When did Star Wars, for example, enter your life? Hmm, interesting question. When did I watch Star Wars? I don't know. So um, how did you watch movies? Because we used to uh, hire this uh, VCR from um, a shop. Hire it for right. a day or two, and uh, oh, nice! I we used to get a bunch of kids' movies, bunch of uh, movies for the adults, and then they would uh, watch stuff. Uh, they would watch probably action or cowboy movies, and uh, we would watch cartoons. So right. that's how we started off watching movies. Um, I think, yeah. So, uh, and, and my granddad's place, we used to have a guy who would uh, come by every weekend and he'd bring a selection of uh, movies. He'd bring a big bag with a selection of movies. So you pick up oh, wow. a couple of them and uh, watch them. I mean, my cousins and I used to watch those. Um, so we watched like Robocop and Robocop Oh, two, I yes. Think, yes, cassettes. Robocop. And then uh, I remember watching a movie with my... Um, uh, uncle, and that was um, a story of a guy who was um, a demolition expert, and he used to bring down buildings. And then somebody had wronged oh. him, so uh, he goes and demolishes a building. And there's somebody, uh, I think he's on the roof at as it goes down, and then there's a helicopter, and he jumps onto the. I don't. I have no clue what movie this was. <laughs> and then there was Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Oh yes, that was that. Crocodile. But I remember Dundee. that was that was uh, I was. We would be in the living room, and the kids were like, um, we put out a mattress, and kids were sleeping over there, me included, and my parents and uncle would be watching movies. So Crocodile Dundee was on a day when I was falling asleep. So I remember watching part of it, and then I fell asleep. And I tried watching Cro Crocodile Dundee recently, and. Uh, I, I couldn't watch it. I was <laughs> falling asleep. 
<laughs> so I've never did seen they, the whole movie. I don't remember how it, I, I don't know how it ends. Did you ever wa- no talking about not being able to watch it now? Did you ever see Police Academy? Yeah. Okay. So my mom and I used to mm-hmm. love Police Academy when I was a kid and my what dad couldn't stand it. Sorry? The serial. Oh, I haven't seen the serial. Okay. Um but this was the oh, movie and my dad couldn't stand it. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking how stupid that was until I tried to watch it again now. And I mean, I can see why it was funny, but it's too silly, too slapstick for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. But there are some so, shows that really last stand the test of time for uh, I think stuff like Mind Your Language um mm. although probably a little too uh, strong for today's audience um is still funny right uh, things like that yeah funnily enough for me very few things that i liked as a kid can i watch star wars star, star wars, wars so we're back, back to, to the star future, wars i don't Indiana remember Jones. These i things. watched star wars um I so I, when I, I first Wars, but... watched it, and I think you said you were around the same time. I first watched it in probably '96, so I would have been sorry. No, what am I saying? '93. I would have been 10, 10 or 11 when I first watched Star Wars. It was gifted to us by my aunt. Um, I must have watched it before that. Um, okay. I remember when I was kind of younger, my uncle had uh, taken some pictures of. Uh, R2, D2, and C3PO figures that um, he'd uh, taken some pictures in. He'd created like a sandy uh, scene, like like oh. on a desert and taken some pictures. So we saw those okay. on a slideshow. So I've, and I definitely knew the characters by then. So I must have seen it by then. Um, but I don't remember consciously watching that. The first movie that I remember watching in the theater was Top Gun. Um, oh yes i, I remember, remember that yeah. vividly um yeah top gun i remember that was also early on but, but but here's the thing you watched it but did you become fanatical because no uh, i remember watching back to the future when i was very I young and not really wrong. getting it now i remember all the lines um, same thing with Star Wars. I'm a, well, not some, not all the Star Wars, but the original three for sure. Huge fan. Like I would have been a proper, well, not full on geek, but part geek, part Star Wars geek. Uh huh. Well, so do you remember I, when you I, became? I guess I wasn't so much of a fan of Star Wars. Um, okay. I was a, a big fan of Star Trek because um, I remember watching the original series on Doordarshan, and then um, we also had. Um, the TNG, the, the next generation, which I was ah, a super fan of, big fan right. of that. And yeah, talking about shows that stand the test of time, the next generation really does. Uh, okay. it, it's fine even now. I, I watched the entire set of <laughs> seven seasons or something. How like many? That seven seasons? Recently. Huh? Okay, right. 26 episodes each. Uh, so that was a it was an effort, but I managed to watch it, and it was fun. It was still fun. Okay. Um, good enough to watch today. So, but then, um, yeah. So you, you mentioned the, um, Back to the Future. While you're there, I got to admit, uh, Counselor Deanna Troy. Ah, she was my heart, my heart. I was like, yeah, she was my heartthrob, man. When I was younger, Counselor Deanna Troy. The empath, right? That was her. Uh, I don't. Her role. Uh, I I I don't remember. Um, yeah, I, I I don't think I shared that. Um, <laughs> so, who did you have a crush on? Any of the women? In Star Trek? I don't think so. Your wife's not in the room. You don't have to lie. Or oh, she is in the room. Is she in the She's studio? She's not here. She's not okay. here. Fine. But definitely not Diana Troy. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I, I might have been watching other serials at the time, so I don't know. Mm. Okay. Do you ever watch? Did you did you remember watching uh, shows like uh, what's it called? Superhuman Samurai. Superhuman Samurai. No, dude. Oh, how do you okay. know all these shows? Or rather, let me. Flip. How do I not know all these shows? 
You just didn't watch as it much TV. It sounds pretty cool. You yeah, must have I don't been think I reading out, more. Running, no, reading or running around outside like a maniac. Right. Mm. Super the Superhuman Samurai yeah. was something that was uh fun. It was basically about um a guy who he's a school kid and he gets something on his wrist like a watch. But then when he uh turns it on, it turns him into a cyber warrior. So Ooh. he goes into the computer and fights viruses physically. Wow. <laughs> it's a wow. It was a, it was a fun show. Um and then I think the main character was also one, uh one of the uh, one of the kids in uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. So it's around okay. that time that this okay. show came out. Star Wars, Back to the Future, all three parts and Indiana Jones. Those were the mm-hmm. those were movies I identified with. Like this mm-hmm. was more than just something that was assume, um amusing. This was something that I'd want to put on my wall or I'd want like the game or you know it it's something I bought into. So I would have been a toy maker's dream. Although they didn't really those weren't toy sort of franchises at least by the time I watched them. I didn't mm-hmm. necessarily want the Star Wars toys uh but the sh- but the actual movies were wow really I don't remember wanting down. anything like that I I I never um had the urge to put any posters up or anything so I still I I actually was given a uh, Star Wars concept art posters by my uncle so I have 10 of these um Star Wars uh I think it was Return of the Jedi posters dude i haven't seen them up on your walls yeah i, I don't have them up there tucked so, away inside my can i please <laughs> if you are just tucking them away but no they'll be they'll be collectors items um if they aren't already they're, yeah. they're uh they, they were a gift to me from my uncle so um i i'm yeah i i keep them safe they're safe <laughs> but they're right. not on my wall okay. so i never had the urge to put anything up on my wall um I still don't have anything up on the walls. <laughs> Let me rephrase the question then. Maybe Forget about whether here. you were passionate. <laughs> yes, our new well, sliding doors um logo can be like a Star Wars something. I don't think so, I was I I don't think I was like fanatical about anything in that sense. Um but here's a different approach. Have been. No, but here's a different approach to the same question. If okay. which character if someone started making fun of the character not in a good humored way but just like being mean is there any character to, where you draw the line and you say dude I no i don't think so no maybe i remember my childhood differently but uh i at this moment i don't think i i was that fanatical about anything i know that my cousins and i had uh like we had chalked out who each of us were in Teen- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was Donatello. April O'Neil. Oh, cousin. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How would I be April O'Neil? <laughs> My sister was April O'Neil because she was born in April. That's so sad, though, right? She has only one option, April. Um, if she wanted well, to be gender specific. Um, well, well, no, I, I don't think we were gender specific in that sense because one of my cousins um, was. I mean, yeah. So she she was April O'Neil because she was born in April, not for any other reason. Oh yeah okay. so <laughs> yeah it was fun yeah and why were you donatello tech i was interested in technology okay you were donatello Dude, my... because you like sticks what were they called because... what was his weapon i don't remember ah you should know your weapon dude So there was a katana size nunchucks and uh, i forgot what the name of the stick was Yeah. I think it's something with D. Okay. But I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, um but Donatello is a guy who uh, built all the tech that TMNT ah, used. Ah, okay, okay. All That's the, very new. Um yeah. Yeah, all, all the uh gear that they used. So that was why I was assigned Donatello. I I like that character. So But apart from that I don't think I really would go out and limb and, and defend anyone or I don't think anybody actually attacked or made fun of any of the other characters they just enjoyed it so 
It was all I cool. think it's if it if it was good humor, for example, like when Family Guy, when they make fun of it, it's usually because they were fans. And so it's as an insider making fun of it. But like if someone just put to trash Back to the Future, for example, like, oh, their uh, logic was warped or whatever. I mean, I wouldn't get angry, but I'd be slightly mm. insulted. Like I'd be a little, mm. little annoyed with that person because this, this meant so much to me. I, see, when we, okay, uh, you and I are a bad example because I obviously didn't watch anywhere near as much TV as you did. But when you look at the shared sort of pop culture from those days, Mm -hmm. I want I think the same thing happens with kids now because there are so many more shows. There are hundreds of shows. Mm. Um, I want I guess yeah, things like Game of Thrones or uh, or whatever. I'm sure there's stuff that you watch, which your friends are watching. But it's a different Who's... experience because, like you said, when you were a kid, you turn the TV on and what's on is on. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now the the number of options is just exponentially more yeah and you can choose right mm -hmm. um so there's an interesting thing um i just read today that um netflix is trying out a linear channel a linear programming on uh, netflix so you turn wow. it on and what whatever's on is on whatever's on yeah did it did it say why they thought people would be up because some people just uh they, they find it stressful to pick the right movie yeah, true, and true. i understand that because very often um these days it, it takes a good 20 30 minutes to just figure out what you want to watch you're going to spend <laughs> yeah you, you actually i mean between um, my wife and i we sit down and then we have to scroll through and see what both of us feel like watching whereas if it's ah. on tv you just change channels and whatever's on is on you just yes. choose a channel and then watch so uh, Netflix is trialing a linear TV channel st mm. that style mm. in, uh, I believe they're trialing it in France. Oh, so if it's okay. successful, that might come to other countries. But tell right. me, now we've spoken about all of these things and we've uh, uh, spoken about the stuff that uh, we are interested in that, that really caught our attention. But how has that influenced um, you today? People say that the media is influential on children's minds. And we've spoken about all of these different uh, shows and whatnot that um, obviously played a large part in our childhood. Um, now, how much do you think that watching those shows has affected... Uh, the way you think or the way you act today? Hmm. I don't know if it's uh, bled into my life as a whole, but definitely the part of me that's still a kid, the part of me that still uh, imagines, uses these basic archetypes. So when I think of time what travel... About what, what about... Um, let's, let's go a little deeper. So let's talk about the values that you embody today. Mm -hmm. Did these shows influence you in any way? Good question. I don't know offhand if they did. So um, I remember that um, a lot of the shows that I watched were st stuff about futuristic technology, about science and that sort of thing. And for right. me, that is a big part of my life. Um, I'm I'm not limiting it to shows that I watch, but also magazines and books that I read. Mm. Um, you know, that, uh, a lot of that, like for example, um, Tintin, uh, Adventures on the Moon, and all that stuff. Um, a lot of that is why I follow uh, SpaceX today. I, I follow um, what's happening with each of their uh, Starship launches and all ah. of that stuff. Um, but also, um, books that I had when I was a kid, like, um, there was a book about, um, uh, facts of, about the earth, which was called, uh, Snoopy's second super book of questions and answers. It was just a question oh, wow. and answer book, but it had okay. Snoopy as one of the characters in it, uh, who was 
um, and Snoopy is the astronaut and <laughs> funny cartoons. Okay. Uh, so a lot of that influenced how the things that I'm interested in today. Mm. Um, so I see a lot of that. You know, we were talking about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's technology. Um, I mean, you know, being able to uh, some of the one of the really interesting things was the their blimp, mm. right? So they had the blimp, which uh, w- the turtles which, had a blimp. I've completely forgotten that. You call yourself a fan? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 Star Wars, Back to the Future, Indiana Jones. Those three turtles. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. So the turtles had a they had a blimp, and oh, the wow. bottom of where it, did they store it? And dude? Glides. They they're in the sewers. It's, Where's this blimp get it's, stored? It's <laughs> the, the mutant no, no, turtles, no. man. But like even no, dude. <laughs> even X Men, even X Men, their spa- their airship is stored somewhere below the pool or whatever. Um, where did this turtle store the blimp? No clue. You couldn't just randomly. No ap- they had a van. Hold, hold on, hold on. Where's the van? That could be parked outside the sewer somewhere. A whole no. blimp. Oh, it was a blimp. blimp. So it you're telling me there was no scene there was a... in which you see them getting into the blimp. It was always just there in the blimp. I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay. But then there was okay. there was Shredder and Krang and the yeah. the X Bebop dimension Rock and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's it's fantastic. It's not realistic. So just go with the flow. It's <laughs> funny how these these tiny things just uh, get on me like there was one of these um shows which movie it was a did movie you, did that affect you when you were a kid though that's nah, the question no nah, okay. i didn't give a shit then but now like for example it this is an example but there's another one where it was one of the x men's maybe one of these movies where they are superheroes um mm-hmm. and they're luring the bad guys into mm-hmm. a forest where there's like a abandoned cabin or something. And the bad okay. guys are going to come. These guys know they're going to be there. And this is a movie which, as you put it, is fantastical. Like it's got all special superhuman powers and all. The thing that annoyed me <laughs> was not that all this crazy fantasy stuff was there. But that mm-hmm. was when the bad guys came the two good guys stood next to each other to ambush them in a lowered basin. And I was annoyed (laughs) saying, that is so stupid. You stand at two ends, so they can't kill you both at the same time. So it, I just find it hilarious how that of all the crazy stuff in the movie, that's what I decided was going too far or was too crazy or silly. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so the the turtles you were saying tech, the the turtles tech uh, made a difference to you. I think yeah. you would have connected with tech in a number of places, like right, even older, yeah, so for example, the... um, Iron Man, huge tech thing. No, I I never watched Iron Man, but there was um, Thunder Sub. Okay, do you remember watching Thunder Sub? No, no. And then there was some other anime stuff, which was really like all these. Uh, um robotics and stuff like that so that was the, all those all those shows were interesting right um yeah i didn't watch iron man i didn't watch really much of transformers or thundercats you know coming back to your question whether it um these things are part of my life or a part of what i became not so much that in the way that it affected you but they were anchor points or reference points for other questions. So, for example, mm-hmm. Star Trek, I realized the basic assumption there is that science is the way forward and science has solved all of humanity's problems because now we're in the spaceship that goes through the universe. Um, and, you know, the technology is what's awesome. And growing up, that's what I... Um, I believed. But mm-hmm. as an adult, I mean, there are loads of reasons to question that, right? Whether technology mm-hmm. is our downfall or at least the downfall of the planet or whatever. Um, but I think True. it's important to note that 
these childish ideas, you could say, because they're from my childhood, they're the ones that put the foundation on which other stuff was built. Um, so even things like um, very subtly experienced, but once I knew the story, X-Men and racism, at least that's the story they're mm -hmm. selling, that um, X-Men was um, an effort to uh, show that diversity was good, that right. if you don't fit in, um, and of course you give them special powers, which adds to the whole experience. But it's actually quite interesting how some of these uh, shows and cartoons and movies um, were exploring pretty complex themes. They're just doing it in a way mm -hmm. that a kid would appreciate it. Um, right. Good and bad, corruption, like uh, the Sith Lord, what corrupts him? Uh, mm -hmm. Anakin and his father, uh, sorry, Anakin and his son Luke. Um, there are patterns there. When did the new Star Wars come out? Oh, uh, 2000. The, 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 no, 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 2000. Yeah, maybe late 90s, early 2000s. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I don't remember liking those at all, but uh, anyway. That's, that's I a, like those only because, again, uh, the tech, not the movie per se, but mm -hmm. the double-edged lightsaber, the droid decars that would come rolling in and then open up and then start shooting. Like those things really got my attention. But yeah, plot-wise, right. not so much. Yeah. Right. Um, Natalie Portman, another heartthrob. <laughs> It's hilarious, man. The number of these women I've had crushes on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember um, any of these uh, TV show crushes. I'm sure I had some, but I, I don't remember any. The crush I most am embarrassed about was Sporty Spice from the Spice Girls. Purely because they were... <laughs> I mean, she's a really good-looking lady, but I mean... I could have gone with Victoria Beckham. I could have gone with Jerry Hallowell, but sporty spice. Um, but yes, I, I stand by but it. I I would agree with you, right? Um, <laughs> the 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 concept, the packaging as sporty spice is a, is probably what got uh, the kid. Yeah, is, is a little yeah. odd. But that's probably what oh sporty. <laughs> I guess it depends on. But but for me, um, at that age, that was like the, I don't know, the cool one. Like you could relate to, oh, yeah, she likes sports. Nice. Yeah, we can chat. Um, <laughs> hey, but but one thing I wanted to get to at some point. Uh, and maybe I couldn't this is watch good... any of their songs. Oh, really? I'll tell you what I want. <laughs> no, I, <wanna> really, really... <laughs> I could do the whole of um, Wannabe, man. I have in the past, actually, right? One of our calls. On, um, on the show. I mean, uh, on one of our recordings, actually. Recordings. What, one thing and I wanted I to get to was... Put that in right here. <laughs> one thing I wanted to get to was, um, how have these shows aged for you? Because I brought up the Cosby show as being this really huge part of my childhood. And then you find out that Bill Cosby is probably the, the most famous serial rapist e ever. Um, uh, the, what do you call? Um, James Bond was a huge part of my adolescence, not childhood. And um, then you find out that Sean Connery, at one point in his life, thought it was okay to slap women. Um, how have your shows aged? Have you had to go through as much uh, disappointment? Um, have your heroes let you down? Uh, Michael Jackson, man. Oh, uh, right. Michael Jackson. Um, what was your... Yeah, you uh, listen to much of his music? Like, were you into the music? Or what was your um, relationship with him and his music? Music. Not, not any of his... I hadn't seen any of his uh, movies at that point. Right. But... Um, just you know, uh, listening to the music, it now seems almost autobiographical or something like that. You know, mm. <laughs> right? Um, I I don't I still don't know much of the lyrics, the exact words, but it um, 
I don't think I can listen to the music in the same way anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know, when you think about it, it's it has been a part of your childhood. Right. Um, how do you say that you're not going to watch that anymore, or how? So, for example, take um, uh, Roadrunner and Wiley e. Coyote. Okay. Mm very um graphic violence uh it's a cartoon <laughs> but not so acceptable today i think right so are you going to stop watching are you not going to show it to kids who grew up in in these years um or bugs bunny man <laughs> you know? yeah yeah um, um it's actually i kind uh... of disagree with some of that hmm Tom and Jerry. So those are those are mild, right? Because it's just a matter of degree it's of cartoon. violence. Yeah, I it's agree. a cartoon. But then when you when you expand on that, you know, it's part that, of your that's childhood. What I, you grew up. I'd love to. Well, so we can actually keep upping the stakes. So you have that, the violence in Tom and Jerry. Then you can move on to the allegations against Michael Jackson. I don't think anything has been proved, right? Most of these are I, allegations. A lot of it, we, and then we would assume of, that they happened. A lot of separate um, people have come up. So yeah, so we I, have those allegations, and then convictions about uh, Bill Cosby, like he's guilty according to the I to the. Actually, jury. don't know any of the details about Bill Cosby. Right, I used to find him hilarious though. Like yeah, you know? so um, what happens? What, what happens? Do you just like? Remove that from your memories. How do you do that? What what so are like you going to do? S- because so he, here's, it's a big part of here's your life. where it becomes tricky. Because um, do you separate the artist from the person? Is that even mm-hmm. possible in real life? Like in theory, you can say yeah, but for example, with Bill Cosby, when you see the women break down as they describe what that incident did to them, not only in the moment but over the rest of their lives and the feeling of powerlessness they had. When you hear all of that, then going back, I find it very hard to separate them. So I could, I mm. guess, watch it, but it would be tough. Um, but mm. I was thinking about it, dude. This is a huge, like if you look at the, um, say in America, the issue with the flag, the Confederate flag, their argument is sort of similar in that, yes, the flag represented something bad with slavery, but my ancestors were from the South, and this was a part of their heritage. And so this is something I'm proud of for that reason. They're battling the same issue of something that, to them at least, was mixed. To uh, a Black American, it's very clear that that flag represents evil. Um, but to the white Americans, so just like, for example, f- for a woman who was drugged and raped by Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby is pure evil. But you talk to Felicia Rashad, the um, his wife, Claire Huxtable, in, in the series. To this mm-hmm. day, she defends him, saying that this mm-hmm. wasn't a, like, uh, whatever, this wasn't about Bill, it was about the women. Um, so yeah, it's it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one. Can you, sell, can you separate um, a person from their deeds, from the things they did? Um, um, no, no, no. I, I, I don't think you can separate a person from their deeds. But can you separate their art or their uh, what you see from what you know they did? What What happens if you never knew about Bill Cosby? Mm. Um, oh yeah, stuff. I'd love the show. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. So, um, so. Why does knowing this change? I don't think that's even a question. You you can't. Really. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, because that is him in that image. You're you're watching him. Yeah. So. Yes. Yes. That's not a question. Uh, so yeah, it does become complicated. Uh, with see, okay, and here here's the thing. It it it. It's uh, different shades, right? So Sean Connery, the fact that he slapped women, the only thing I've heard of 
is that interview with with the Diane Sawyer. We don't know that he actually did that. Yeah, yeah, so that's my point. He thinks that's it's okay point. under certain circumstances. Exactly. So I completely disagree with that. But my point is that the only exposure I have to this idea is him saying that in theory he's behind it. Um, and then that being contested and whatever. So it doesn't really uh, viscerally, emotionally get in the way of watching James Bond. But if a woman came out and said, he beat me up and then shared her story, this now becomes real. At the moment, James, we don't know whether anyone we don't has. Know. So um, it's, I've not looked into it. You've not looked into it. But partly we do I know that he actually I have. his mind about this, right? Yes, you said, right? You'd shared that. Um, it was so in an interview? In, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I okay. believe 2003 or so, he says that um, he's changed his mind and he would not... Um, he, he believes that it was not right of him to say or think that. Right. So, uh, again, um, having a thought and acting on it is different from having a thought and just talking about it. Um, and as Sh Sean Conway reminds us, um, if that change of heart was real and not just for show, uh, mm -hmm. that... It comes down to, do you believe people can change? And if they show remorse, if they try to make amends, is that enough? Um, that's a that's another big one. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we should be uh, open to people changing their minds because um, you are not who you are forever, right? Um, right. You have, I have changing opinions. I do not um, hold the same opinions forever. And I, 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 uh, uh, I say that I will change my mind, and I think that's a good thing. Right. Yeah. Um, as long as the, the reason for changing my mind is a more informed and mature standpoint. Right. <laughs> Talking of people changing their minds, um, maybe we can wrap up by acknowledging something that has to be acknowledged that half of America, or more than half of America, has decided, has changed their mind about who their president should be. What is your take well, on unfolding events, well, man? My take They're on that be... is that last time um, he did not win, win the popular vote. He finally won he, with the Electoral College? He won with the Electoral College. So it was more than half of the people who voted for him last time ben. also who did not sure. want him in power. Sure. It's just more decisive this time. Yeah. Um, do you think he will leave? It's peacefully? sad to see the way he's acting right now. It's really sad. Yeah. Not surprising, but sad. Not yes. surprising, but definitely sad. He's not he's pathetic. not one of those people who's gonna go quietly into the night. He's gonna rage, rage against the dying of the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, I want and not the visual. Not for good I reason. want the visual of him holding the wall of the White House with this with the FBI or the army like dragging him. He's horizontal. I want to see that. That that would make my day. I don't think that'll ever happen, but I know. Yeah, it's a, I know. Unfortunately. It's a wish that we can wish for. Yes. Someday, maybe. But uh, he said enough things for it to be comical. Like, uh, you know, like, uh, can you imagine me lo losing to uh, Joe Biden? He's the worst candidate to lose against. And if I lose against him, <laughs> I would have to, I know what I would do. I would have to leave the country probably. And uh, he'll probably, that was probably him lying anyway. I hope he doesn't leave the country and I hope they put him in jail. <laughs> <laughs> He's got. They've got enough uh, to go on. Whether that happens is a different story. But yeah, um, yeah. I don't think interesting anyone interesting would have times. got away with so many things, like um, saying that he would not step down after voting and all of that stuff. Yeah, it seems treasonous to me. But uh, it's left to be seen whether other people would find it absolutely um, treasonous. 
Not my country. Uh, not so not much my, my problem. problem. <laughs> Not so much my problem. It does affect the entire world, I believe, which is why yes. I'm interested in what happens. Right. Um, but I think a lot of people I know are relieved that he's out of, he's going to be out of the White House. He's, well, the votes have not all come in as yet and the electoral votes have not been cast as yet. Mm. So January will tell us what actually is going to happen. <laughs> right. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Um, should we should we wrap up this session? Yes. Um, thank you to everyone who's been patient enough to listen to us and just uh, hear us talk about the stuff that we found interesting as a kid. If you also found any of this interesting, just leave a comment below. Tell us what else you watched. I was looking at stuff that I found interesting. One of the shows uh, produced for DD was Space City Sigma. If you remember that, just leave a note yes. down in the comments. Space City Sigma, I, I think, was fascinating. I don't remember watching too many of them, but uh, it was interesting at that time. Right. Um, I'm Sushil. The other voice that you've heard, and or the other character that you see on screen, is Rohan. I am and Rohan. <laughs> And we are uh, together hosts of the Sliding Doors podcast. And we like to have conversations like this and also with other guests. And uh, if you found this interesting, do share it with your friends. Follow us on slidingdoorspodcast.com, Sliding Doors on Sliding Doors Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, give us a like, man, or woman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, subscribe for absolutely no reason just do it absolutely don't no think reason. about it we're just, just gonna have long button. conversations like this and um we encourage you to just you know drop a line let us know what you want us to talk about if you want to be a part of this conversation we will be happy to invite you in thank you so much and we will see you probably next week or the week after Ciao. Bye for now.